I got a mule and her name is Sal Fifteen miles on the Erie Canal She's a good old worker and a good old pal Fifteen miles on the Erie Canal We've hauled some barges in our day Filled with lumber, coal and hay And we know every inch of the way From Albany to Buffalo Low bridge, everybody down Low bridge for me I'm Liz Donner, um, born and raised Well, I was born in Manhattan, raised in Nashville, Tennessee with my sister Sarah. I live in Orchard Park, New York now, Western New York, right outside of Buffalo. Work in an art gallery, part-time. Also a part-time prop stylist for TV commercials, which is fun. I can pull all the stuff together for the shots. Um, two boys, um, John Henry is 20, Walter is 18. My husband Jack and I have been married for 21 years. And we met in Atlanta. He's from Western New York, so we ended up moving back to the area. That's where we've raised our kids. I'm Bob Evans. I was born in Los Angeles in the Hollywood Hospital. And I've lived in Monterey for the last 27 years with my spouse of 53 years come this August. We have three grown sons and three marvelous daughters-in-law. Uh, six grandchildren ranging in age from three to twenty. Uh, my last career was as a publisher within a large college text and software publisher. My side of the business was software and I've been retired since 1998 and enjoying it a great deal. My name is Ken Katzma. I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1934. I now live in Idaho Falls, Idaho. I was a nuclear engineer at the Idaho National Laboratory in Idaho Falls where I was working. I retired for the last 15 years and joined bicycle. I'm Carrie Katzma and I was born in Blue Island, Illinois and I now live in Idaho Falls, Idaho and I was a former nurse in the hospital. I'm Norma, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. I now live in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, I was a lawyer for a long time for the city of New York but I'm now retired and I do work for volunteer lawyers for the arts and I play the bassoon. I'm Jim Luganbuehl. I was born in New York City but grew up in Seattle. I live now in Raleigh, North Carolina and I was a social psychology professor at North Carolina State for 32 years until I retired five years ago and I love retirement. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, Back in January, when I saw this list of trips on the Sierra Club website, I said, I need to convince my sister to do this with me. So I called her up and I said, look, you got to join the Sierra Club because they're doing this bike trip and it's in your backyard and it'll give me a chance to spend a week with you. And to my great relief, she said yes. Um, I live in Corvallis, Oregon. Um, I'm married. I have two kids. Right now I'm a housewife and um, previously my previous life I was um, in biomedical research and so far I'm having a great time. I'm Barry Prusen from Atlanta, Georgia and uh, I was born in New York, raised in Chicago, lived in Florida for a while and I was in the wholesale meat business all my working years. I had my own wholesale meat company that sold uh, Steaks in volume to national and regional hotel and restaurant chains, steakhouses, and other distributors. And I'm retired, enjoying life, uh, married with two boys, daughter-in-law, and I want you to know that Bob helped me repair my, my bike yesterday. <laughs> Had a flat tire, and he tended to my to my scrapes, and we've become very good friends. Hi everyone, 
Um, my name is Peg, <laughs> in case you've forgotten. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I grew up in Albany, and uh, so traveling across New York State is uh, like gonna be a homecoming for me. And I used to work in Rochester, where we're gonna ride into tonight, and so I have some friends along the way. I'm gonna visit some friends in Syracuse. And uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, what do I do? I'm a nurse, part-time, school nurse, camp nurse, and uh, I also place foreign exchange students and supervise them during their visits here. And um, other than that, I love to bike. My name is Bob Walsh. I live in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I am the assistant trip leader on this uh, bicycle trip uh, from Buffalo, New York to uh, Albany, New York. Uh, I was born in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, and uh, most recently I am retired, but uh, currently uh, coaching track and cross country at Huntley High School in Huntley, Illinois. And I'm certainly glad to be here and to be associated with Bob Evans and the rest of our group here today. Thank you very much. I am Paul Minkus. And uh, I am a Sierra Club National Outings leader. I'm the leader of this cycling outing. And uh, right now we're sitting beside the beautiful Genesee River in uh, just outside Rochester, New York, and waiting for a few of our trip members to join us so we can continue riding up the river to the middle of downtown, historic Rochester. And uh, I live in the Chicago area, was born and raised there. And uh, I recently moved outside of Chicago, about 40 miles outside the city, and lived there with my wife in a nice big house that we got. I have one daughter, she's 22. And um, for my living, I am an athletic official. I referee sports and uh, do some other related things to that. I work for Park District as an adult sports coordinator, and I also assign referees. I have an assignment service where I send other referees to leagues, and that's basically what I do. It's not lucrative, but uh, it's wonderful. I enjoy it, and uh, I'm self-scheduled, which is a luxury. I can work when I want or not work when I want. So it gives me time for my daughter and time for doing these outings and uh, other personal things. And I'm happy to be here. The weather's great so far, and it's a good group. Saturday, Buffalo to Medina. Packed and ready. Okay, we're gonna have some scrambled eggs with uh, green peppers and onions this morning, and coffee, and some apples, and some yogurt. Hopefully that uh, meets everybody's needs this morning to get us going. I trimmed the back of my running shoe off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they were hitting. Caught on in the egg. That's right. <laughs> Taking care of us all. Well, for this morning anyway. <laughs> I wear out, we'll see what happens. Because once the student loans became such an issue, Americans stopped backpacking. And it's really noticed overseas. Um, so I think people who, you know, as they retire, they, they know how to do it. <laughs> Our merry band getting ready to go. This is downtown Buffalo. This is City Hall. I'll, I'll, I'll just stay here and watch the bikes. Sure, because I'll be right here. You can watch it before I take it. You want to go up there? Okay. All right? Yeah, I'll watch. This is Dennis Galucky, and he leads tours and works for Landmark uh, Niagara. Uh, and their mission, uh, as I introduced you a little bit last night, is to uh, interpret and to save uh, the historic uh, structures and the architecture and interpret it. Uh, in the Buffalo and the Niagara County area. What I've been trying to do in the last couple of years is take this landmark society and mesh it with other not for profits that are telling stories about the area uh, uh, through their tour programs and create one Buffalo tour group. Uh, and that's uh, so it's a joint mission virtual organization basically. This hub and spoke is right in front of you, and uh, this is the core of the city. We call it Niagara Square now. And the octagon is really what this is more than a square or a circle. In fact, the building we're in, if you were to go around it, you'd see it's got eight sides to it. 
festival is, is going to go on. It starts today and tomorrow, the Allentown Art Festival. And you can see them setting up all the booths all up and down Delaware. Uh, they'll get a half a million people here over the next two days. We'll be up and down. By then, we had two presidents come out of Buffalo. Uh, that was the old city hall, that wonderful uh, steeple that you can see to the right. Uh, Andrew Warner from Rochester was the architect. Of the swung closed for the road and for us. Where's the canal? Original towpath. And the actual canal was what now looks like a parking lot. We're entering the canal now. There's an old swing bridge, it's not in use anymore. This is our path. These are some of the houses. Lunchtime. Sisters along the canal. Tonawanda Gateway Harbor.
Yeah, those doors look like the ones on the Panama Canal. This is Middleport. Like you lift one and then you get in the car and drive to the next one and lift the next right. one. Right. What do the controls look like? You can see it here if you want. Mm -hmm. There's a eight horse motor that runs the whole system. Here they come now. Mm -hmm. And all it is oh, is there's cool. counterweights on each end of the bridge that make up the weight of the bridge, but the what's not there that the motor makes up the difference. Mm -hmm. Not that I dislike them, I just never included them on my diet, but I'm having them tonight. Doors to close the canal in the winter. Sunday, Medina to Rochester. We have to take the people out tonight. Uh, could have been 
car caught the flying of the switch or something. Jack Clark look. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 41, so we're about the same age. I should be on a bicycle riding with these guys. Uh, some railroads don't allow people to uh, get out of their seats, but we do on our train. On some occasions, we'll let people go car to car. We'll let people walk up to the locomotive in the vestibule. Good morning. We're just leaving Medina. New York had a wonderful tour of a railroad museum. Skyline. Picture, the biker. Let's hear another. <laughs> the first settler in my town was a woman. I thought maybe some of you would appreciate that then. Um, and she settled with her family in the town of Gaines in 1807. By 1820s, uh, the town of Gaines was the site for the most um, commerce and industry in the county. It was the hopping place. It had all the businesses, it had taverns, because the Ridge Road was the east-west link between the Rochester area and the Buffalo area. But the canal superseded all that. Our group on the courthouse steps in Albion, Pullman Memorial Universalist Church, Tiffany organ, Tiffany stained glass windows, Trail Junction at the edge of Rochester, by the Genesee River, What they did was they carried the canal uh, across big rivers, and we're looking at a very big river, one of the biggest rivers that the canal had to cross, the Genesee River. And uh, the Genesee Aqueduct is still, the original Genesee Aqueduct is still um, in perfect condition right downtown, a block from our hotel. And so when we get to the hotel, I'm going to point it out to you, and I'll also probably describe you a little bit of actually what aqueducts are. And in the next two or three days especially, we're going to see some marvelous examples of uh, aqueducts, especially the day after tomorrow and uh, they're in very interesting structures. Now I have the evidence. You have the evidence ready. Have you ever known a bike? Go for it. <laughs> Checking in at the hotel. Monday. Rochester to Seneca Falls. You could expand your city up efficiently and not just be going outward inefficiently, certainly for transportation of people with age. Uh, I want you to notice also one of the things you'll see, one of the architectural enhancements. Art in the Historic Waterworks.
originally, but it was uh, blasted and now it's really only 80. We We're gonna double the water power in Rochester in the next five years. No, it's curves. Oh. Seneca Falls at last. And so this space right here was dedicated for free speech. A lot of reformers got to speak here. And that's one of the reasons why the convention was held in this building. Now eventually the Wesleyan Methodists moved out. They needed a larger space. And they sold it to a man named Johnson. He turned it into an opera house, a music hall, it became a movie theater, they used to let people roller skate here. For a while it was a Ford garage that they sold and repaired for to. Uh, and then in 1980, by that time, by the time we became a national park, this was actually a laundromat, which went very well with the sign that said birthplace of women's rights. That as a woman, you legally have no control over your wages, and you don't get paid as much as they work. So they were in a more centralized location and thus able to find out about this convention when a small newspaper article was put in the Seneca Curry. Ah, uh, dinner. Tuesday, Seneca Falls to Syracuse. My name is Andrea Stewart, and I'm the Visitor Services Manager here at Montezuma and um, run by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And so then there's the whole National Wildlife Refuge System. Is, I think it's too with the eagles it's more all of a sudden because I grew up um, near Albany, just south of Albany on the Hudson River and I never would have imagined to see an eagle and I, people come and visit it's from just the Hudson Valley right. and they'll say, oh there's eagle nests all up and down. Just on the <laughs> left, all the very sudden, left bottom of the view there's a... This is lunch on Tuesday under the big top. And those big fuzzy white bathrobes. Yeah. <laughs> right over here.
bridge that would cross the, the, the canal and they had to have a reliable way you know, for the Erie Canal to cross the, cross the creek. So they, they came up with the aqueduct idea. And uh, just try to picture wooden boards you know, all across there, like a bathtub, and wooden boards coming up the sides on both ways. And like where, we were, where we're standing would be the towpath. You know, and the horses would come up, up over this bridge, over the towpath. <laughs> There's Norma. Exploring some of the first expansion of the canal. The first time I came through with my wife, I found out I just was in the town and started asking people where to eat. And when the first five people told me died of sour barbecue, I said, we got to check this place out. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Syracuse invented salt potatoes. Oh. I don't know, um, you know, that's kind of big in this part of the country. Salt potatoes? What, soft salt potatoes? Salt potatoes. Salt. Potatoes. salt. salt. How are they prepared? <laughs> uh, they boil them and they put a heck of a lot of salt in the water. <laughs> Oh. And when they do that. And then they ma do they mash them? No, uh, they serve them with gobs of butter. So oh. it's so good for you. Those are the small, <laughs> small potatoes. Yeah, it's small potatoes. Small potatoes, yes. In fact, ironically, we, we, had a, we still have a salt kettle that was used to boil the salt, the, the, the water off many years ago. And the few, first few years, we boiled fixed fall salt potatoes in it. So it's quite appropriate. Cast iron. <laughs> From Buffalo to Albany, there's a drop of about 530 feet. So you've got to go from one level to another. And the gate does that for you. If you come in at a higher level, you open up the valves in the gate, and the water level then seeks, water seeks its own level. Open the gates, and out goes your boat, or the boat comes in. So that's the way all the lockages were done. Now, when you have a higher water level, you can't open the gates because of tremendous water pressure. But you can actually use the valves. The man would go at the top of the lock and use a throw rod. 90, 180 degrees, he'd open it. This knuckle, which is behind here, would then open the gate, the valve, which is vertical, to about this position. Actually about where it is right now. That he could do. That would crack it. The water then would flow, of course, from the high side to the low side, equalize. Then, usually there were six lock masters at East Lock to open the gates and to service, you know, the, the double locks. Water Street in Syracuse, now and then. Wednesday, Syracuse to Rome. Ready to roll.
Chittenango Falls, home of Frank Baum and the Yellow Brick Road. We got to the point where the boats wouldn't fit in the locks and some of them couldn't make the bends in the canal. So 10 years after the 1825 opened, 1835, they start planning and that for this addition. Well, right across the canal here is the site of the 1825 canal and the site of a dry dock, a Chittenango Landing Canal Bolt Dry Dock. Model of the boat they are building. As you drive along, they now you'll see these rods sticking out of the water. Those are the remains of canal boats. Canal closed in 1918. Everything usable on the old boats, since they were no good on the new canal system, which was all powered, they stripped everything useful off the boats and abandoned the hulls. So, and you'll see a whole row of these, which are the supports to hold your uh, boat together. Crossing the canal at Lock 21. Great restaurant inside. On the Mohawk River and it's it's very beautiful, and, uh, and, and a good restaurant tomorrow night with a, with a good salad bar. Thursday, Rome to Little Falls. Why did they rebuild the fort? She says, well, you know, so school children and tourists could see, you know, what Fort Stanley looked like. She said, he said, I mean, you know, are there, you know, why they, why they rebuild it? Is it, because uh, are there Indians? <laughs> she says, no, it's just, he, he was under the impression that there was a, a threat here, that the fort was rebuilt because uh, the, the people of Rome needed to be defended. <laughs> We've never had them out. We've had them for 50 years. We just never put them out because they were incredibly valuable. And then one day we were in, in, in our storage area and we said, you know, we ought to pull these out. He bought what is now the city of Rome and then he kept acquiring and acquiring. And he was, he was very controversial in his day because he refused to sell any of the property to the settlers. They were forced to lease. It's our hotel in the distance. 
in the Denny's. I do this trail every day. Every day? Yep. Oh. 13 miles, so. That's great. <laughs> the Remington Arms Factory. Break time. Fort Herkimer Church. Last year was the final stage, even though you see some that may not look finished. They did the painting on this floor. Uh, the white was done last summer, and it was 30 years. Of it. And then they started on the pulpit, as you can see. And in the process of taking the, the white off that was on it, they discovered this. And they're still uh, trying to figure out what to do with it, because they want to destroy it. And they're not sure of the, the origin of it, uh, but it's something unique to this type of filming. Do tomorrow's or the trip orientation for tomorrow there.
There used to be uh, factories and uh, manufacturing all up and down the right the river. And like I said, tomorrow we're going to ride that way. And even when you get a mile or two down, you can still see where the old factories were up on the up on the along the river on the bluffs up there. Dressed for dinner. <laughs> I just told him put it up there. No, you should have photographs of that. You know who has the authority around here, yeah, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so there was a little air coming there. He went outside because he was warm and I said, Well, gee, are you with Salon? You get the air here. So we switched. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's so what happened. The blood. Right here. The blood had no to go except down so it ran down into your thumb. So that's why it's going down into your thumb. Yingling. 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 Yingling.
but now, just last year, they finished a section of trail that runs from here along the canal. So we're going to be riding a nice trail, nice new trail, not have to climb that thousand feet on the highway, and then a screamer, it used to be a screamer of a downhill. <laughs> oh, I got the cameras out, I got their fingers in their ears. <laughs> news is lit. Lunchtime. Ice cream time. Slow, slow, slow. Did you fall? It's not no, I flatted on this lip. Legs back there, they're pumping her bike up. I don't know if it's just if it's just a little soft or if it's got a slow leak. Yeah. So the folks back at home will really believe that I can change a tire. <laughs> You were flat again. Oh, are you just filming? We thought you were flat. Oh, you no flat? Not yet. Walking. Walking. We're walking. We're walking. <laughs> walking. And I'm certain that we will be able to get to uh, the Hudson River in time uh, without any unforeseen difficulties like mechanical problems or flat tires <laughs> or, or you know, whatever. You're all invited to my room at 5.45 for breakfast. And we have... Bagels. <laughs> what kind of bagels? <laughs> yogurt. We have uh, yogurt for everybody. We have uh, whole wheat bagels. We have a banana for everybody. We have an orange juice for everybody. Cool. <laughs> Paul really went overboard today. <laughs> I would encourage you... Um, sleep with your, your helmet on. <laughs> 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 I've been told I have to wear my camelback with, with, with the nozzle in your mouth. <laughs> the Last Supper with the Ten Disciples. If anybody leans over to kiss you, Paul, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Bob are separated. <laughs> it's fun while it lasted. <laughs> This was our last meal together, and, and we'll uh, everybody you. has collected, everybody has contributed to this, and we came out exactly right. Saturday, Amsterdam to Albany, 5.45 a.m. I think we got Barry up too early.
As a senior member of the tech division, have your sleep patterns changed? <laughs> we need Jim for this. My sleep patterns are fine. Just at the end in Albany. Down to. Oh. Break time. Oldest house in the Mohawk Valley. There was a fort here and a stockade. Schenectady was originally very important because the, the, most, um, the most arduous falls on the Mohawk River were from here down to the Hudson. You couldn't, it was not navigable. So they would unload the gear here and it would go overland from here to Albany. Okay, we're going this way. All right, hang on a second, we're not all Group photographer. The group. First people I should like to give thanks are to all of you. You guys have been a great group. And um, I know I'm not always deal, easy to deal with. And uh, you guys have understood me and worked with me. And, and no one has, has bitched about anybody. Everybody's been uh, everything. Everybody's been super flexible and super friendly and super easy and super cooperative. And, uh, there's not a, one, not a rummy among you, <laughs> and just like, uh, just like the, uh, the credit card applications that I flood my mailbox, you guys are all pre-approved <laughs> <laughs> for uh, any outing of mine, and uh, it's been a, it's truly been a joy to travel with you, and uh, I hope I get the opportunity to travel with some of you again. Pause for directions. I'm not sure, but I hear a strong feeling that it saved him from a serious, serious, serious problem. Because somebody found on the trail or something? Yeah, right here. And into Albany. Six o'clock, one more trip and back we'll go, right back home to Buffalo. Low bridge, everybody down. 